This is a quick review session of the magnetism unit for AP Physics. I'll be leaving out uh, Faraday's law or electromagnetic induction for the reason it'll be done uh, separately. The first uh, concept is the magnetic field due to a current carrying conductor. And uh, this was first discovered in the uh, early parts of the 19th century. Michael Faraday is credited with uh, basically claiming and discovering that the magnetic field associated with a current carrying conductor is circular in nature and since your computer screen or a piece of paper would be a two-dimensional plane in the XY direction then um, the Z dimension would be into or out of the screen and so this X symbol describes a current carrying conductor going into the paper and so you kinda need to know that convention so this is directed into the paper and if you use your right hand and you put your thumb in the direction of the current flow in this case into the paper your fingers will be in the direction of the magnetic field and so here I will draw them circular around in the clockwise direction would be the direction of the magnetic field so now we know the direction of the magnetic field based on this right hand rule or right hand curl rule as we'll come to know it the magnitude of that magnetic field can be found by mu naught or the permittivity of free space divided by 2 pi times the magnitude of the current over r the distance away from uh, the current carrying conductor I've got a little graphic that is a, a nice illustration of the right hand rule so uh, basically it shows your right hand your fingers wrapping around it and in this particular case that would show a conductor coming out of the paper which would be denoted with a dot in the middle of that circle and if you use your right hand as you see here in the graphic we see that the direction in the magnetic field is in the opposite direction in this case the uh, counterclockwise direction so this is the first idea we have circular magnetic fields due to uh, current carrying conductors our magnitude is described using this equation and the direction would be the right hand curl rule uh, the second one that we're going to talk about is a force on a moving charged particle in a magnetic field. And um, I'm going to make an initial sketch here. So as I'm doing that, you can check out the equation over here. The uh, force, the magnetic force on a charged particle in a... Uh, magnetic field is the magnitude of the charge in coulombs times the velocity or the speed in meters per second um, times the strength of the magnetic field in Tesla times the sine of theta where theta is the angle uh, the angular uh, between the direction of the velocity and the direction of the magnetic field so first let me go ahead and sketch a magnetic field going into the paper I'll draw those magnetic field lines now in that z-axis again x denotes into the paper and I'll draw a positive charge over here plus Q that has a velocity going in the rightward direction so as soon as it enters this region of the magnetic field a force acts on it that's going to be perpendicular to the direction of velocity we're going to use another right hand rule that we will ultimately be using uh, quite a bit or at least variants of this right hand rule in this little graphic you can see that the middle finger denotes the direction of the magnetic field the index finger in this case shows the direction of the current but this is kind of a generic uh, sketch for the right hand rule and in this in this case the middle finger is the direction of uh, velocity and then your thumb shows the direction of your force the right hand rule is for positive charges and so in problems where you see negative charges like electrons or other negatively charged ions uh, you would use your left hand so if you do this and put your um, middle finger in the direction of the screen or your paper your index finger in the direction of velocity you'll find that this produces an upwards force on the particle so as soon as it enters the magnetic field and I'll draw it right here as soon as it enters that field its velocity is to the right but there's a magnetic force acting up towards the top of the screen in this particular case however notice that the direction of uh, the force and therefore the direction of acceleration uh, because this is a net force is now radially inward towards the center of the circle the velocity here which I'll draw as a separate vector line this is going to be our uh, tangential velocity and so what that creates is basically circular motion and so anywhere that particle is and so if I draw it here at some other point if you do use the right hand rule again you'd find that your index finger is now pointed upwards 
your middle finger is directed into the paper, and then that means that the direction of the magnetic force is again radially inward to the center of the circle, causing a circular path of the charged particle. The magnitude of that force is Fb is equal to QVB sine theta, and oftentimes you'll see this, a couple of variants of this, you'll see that the magnetic force F sub B is your centripetal force, and so often you'll see QVB is equal to mv squared over r. And you'll ultimately uh, do some work in this area. <clears throat> and then you'll also see uh, instances where there is an electric field that's causing, that's essentially negating that uh, force. And so oftentimes you'll see that the electric, uh, sorry, the magnetic force is equal to the electric force. And then you can work from there. We can say QVB is equal to, uh, and let's remember here, I'm just going to kind of jot this off to the side here, that by definition the electric field is the uh, electric force per unit charge, and so therefore I can say that the electric force is going to be the magnitude of the electric field times uh, the charge, and so therefore the charges cancel out. And I'm left with quite a, a simple equation. Uh, in order for that to happen I need to be going a certain velocity, which is the ratio of the electric field to the magnetic field. Okay, these are just kind of variants of this uh, force on a moving charged particle in a magnetic field. Let's go ahead and take a look at um, some other ideas here. So the third of four ideas that I want to talk about is force on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field. So uh, likewise, if I have a current carrying conductor that produces a force, this is the premise of generator action. Um, if I were to, again, make a sketch, in this, in this case I'll have a current carrying conductor going to the right. Here's the direction of conventional current flow or whole flow. This is the direction of positive charges. And if you do that, you're really just kind of using the same right-hand rule and the same ideas um, from part two above, which is force on a moving charged particle in a magnetic field. So in this case, my magnetic field is going into the paper. Again, uh, I'll draw your attention over here to the um, right-hand rule, and we can see that if for a positive charge, again, you'll put your middle finger in the direction of the magnetic field, uh, your index finger in the direction of current, which is really the same thing, because if it's conventional current, it's positive charges, and then your thumb shows the direction of the force. In this case, if I go ahead and do that, I see that there's a force acting on this current carrying wire that's acting upwards. So the uh, magnetic force acts in the upwards direction uh, in that wire in this particular instance. The uh, magnitude of that force can be found using this equation over here. The um, magnetic force is a function of the uh, magnitude of the current in the wire in amps, uh, the length of the wire in meters, the strength of the magnetic field in tesla, and the sine of theta. Again, theta being the angle between the magnetic field and the direction of current flow. Uh, lastly, let's take a look at this last idea. Um, the last idea is an induced EMF due to a current carrying conductor. Uh, sorry, this is actually a typo here. Let me go ahead, ahead and say that. To a moving conductor in a magnetic field. Okay, so now if I don't have current already in a conductor and I move it through the magnetic field, we'll see that that puts a force on the charges in the wire and basically polarizes it, gives it a positive side and negative side and therefore an induced EMF in that wire. So let's say that we have a magnetic field again directed into the paper. Here are my magnetic field lines and I take a wire, this time it will be directed uh, up and down or vertically, and that wire now has a velocity to the right. And as that wire moves through the magnetic field, if you again use your right-hand rule, in this case, imagine that we're dealing with forces on positive charges. So inside this wire, there are some positive charges, and there are also some negative charges. It's initially got a net uh, charge of zero, so that's a mixture of positive and negative charges. However, as soon as it enters the magnetic field, it's now a moving charged particle in a magnetic field. If you use your right-hand rule again, your, uh, sorry, your middle finger into the paper, 
your index finger uh, in the direction of the velocity of this conductor, your thumb will show the direction of the force. So therefore, if I draw this wire at some moment later, once it's entered the field, there's been a force acting on all of the positive charges, assembling them on the top of the wire. Uh, likewise, um, I have negative charges assembled on the bottom of the wire, and that induces an EMF. I now have a positive side and a negative side, and I have potential between one side and the other side of the wire. The magnitude of that potential can be found using this equation, uh, where it's uh, BLV sine theta, where B is the magnetic field in Tesla, L, uh, L is the um, length of the wire, V uh, is the uh, velocity that, with which the wire is moving through the magnetic field, and theta is the angle between the direction of the magnetic field and the velocity.